live going on the air. Life Grace Ministries. The broadcast is in progress. Are you with me? Let's get an amen going. Uh, some rousing rounds of hallelujah as we are on the air. That is my radio voice. That's all I've got. You know where we're at. It's Life Grace Ministries. Mr. Preacher the Pro here live. And on the internet radio, it's after 8.20. We're going to start this about 8. Then we got kind of few notes. So, and I kind of kicking it off a little bit. Uh, and then we started it for about a little while. So we got that thunder rolling. We got our big books of love. And we got our mud. And that's cool. So we are good to go. You got your pens and papers, your notebook tablets, uh, your, uh, all your good stuff for the good stuff. Now I'm going to be bringing a little bit extra as we're going to talk about the uh, a little bit more into uh, what is it here? The uh, armor of God. So I'm going to be kicking that off of here in a little bit. And then we're going to be going into a little bit more into uh, Luke, which is uh, in the King James Version of the Bible. And so a uh, little bit tired, a little bit groggy. Uh, I had a pretty long day. and uh, So we're, uh, we're just kicking it off here. We're getting into it. Uh, I am live over at Twitter right now. Uh, so if you care to join me for a live uh, a live simulcast, it's pretty cool. Got it set up. Got it locked in. And uh, so appreciate you guys being here, checking this out. As we continue in the book of Luke, uh, just checking social media here. We're going into the rest of uh, into chapter 5. Uh, pretty amazing story if you uh, really look at it and look at what's going on in that book. It is amazing. So we're going to talk about, uh, I think I'm going to read into uh, 2 Corinthians 10, 3 and 6 uh, as we're talking about uh, the armor of God. Now, uh, so I'm just updating some stuff here uh, apparently I got picked up on uh, some radio stations across the states so that's exciting I'm pretty pretty stoked about that uh, I'm kind of tired like I said but uh, you know every time I start getting into this and I really uh, feel the zeal and the enthusiasm about podcasting um, that devil gets in there and he just tries to shut me down and run me out. And uh, so that's, uh, you know, being transparent with you folks, a, a little bit, uh, you know, battle-worn as uh, the day progressed. Uh, I already did uh, a show earlier. And so uh, it's, uh, it's something, it's something else. That uh, devil just doesn't want to give up. Uh, so I gotta use everything I've got against him, the armor of God, and uh, everything that I've got uh, that I know in uh, in the arsenal uh, to uh, defeat that foe, because he just doesn't he doesn't want to give up. He's just been battling so much that uh, it's uh, it just blows me away. I'm like I, I I'm just like wow. This dude just does not want to give up. He uh, he just keeps attacking and uh, you know making me not feel like I don't want to do this. But uh, I uh, I know better, and uh, he's not going to stop me. So he can uh, you know where he can go. I've got some message for him, uh, as it's just uh, it's just amazing. So, I grabbed my notes, I went into prayer, and uh, went into battle mode with him, and uh, drop kicked him out of the ring, gave him a pile driver, 
And then I gave him the figure four and then threw him out of the ring. So he's got nothing to stand on and he has no authority over me. So I don't know what he's thinking about, but uh, you know, he may as well uh, go uh, walk somewhere else because it ain't gonna happen here. So uh, yeah, that lasted about five seconds, maybe 10. And uh, uh, not gonna happen. Not gonna go into that again. Not gonna let him do that. Uh, and not gonna let him attack me like that. So you see on the profile, now on the pictures of where it's at, there's a little picture of a lion and Jesus. And uh, that is my armor, that is my strength. So uh, we gotta, we gotta, you know, we gotta fight that. Uh, he comes in there to kill, steal, and destroy. It's the enemy, you know. And, uh, and the more you put the word on him, folks, the more uh, he tries to attack. And uh, it, uh, you, you weaken him with the word. You conquer your fear with faith. And you overpower uh, that fear that you have. You overpower that with your faith. Because he comes in there and tries to get the fear, or overpower our faith with his fear. Uh-uh. Done, done, and over. So I hope you guys are getting this. I hope there is a, you know, there is a point. I am going somewhere with this. I uh, appreciate you guys tuning in, hanging out. Uh, like I said, he, he almost talked me out of doing this. Uh, as I was sitting there kind of just, um, kind of, you know, like not really moping around, but just kind of putting it off. And like I said, that was about five or ten seconds, and then uh, I was like, nope, 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 nope. You ain't going to do that to me again. You already had your way one time. It ain't going to happen. So as I put the stranglehold on him, uh, as I'm getting into the other part of the, uh, where is it at here? I'm getting into uh, the uh, armor of God. Uh, I got into, uh, where was it at here? 2 Corinthians 10, 3, and 6 out of the King James, just touching briefly on it. For thou, we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of a warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Now, here's the definition of uh, stronghold and casting down imaginations. Uh, a place or a means of protection and refuge. Uh, and then it says Satan's power, which is a stronghold. Casting down imaginations, a scheming or a planning or a plot, and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ and having in a readiness to revenge all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. Now, as Christians, we are in danger of being held captive by the devil's schemes. We are in constant spiritual struggles with the acts of the sinful nature, demons, the attacks, or the kingdom, or the ranks of the armies of Satan, who want to enslave us to our desires or disobedience or afflictions of the past by building up strongholds in the mind by way of entry points that we open up to them or the entry points that were open because of past experiences, generational curses, and sins, and Dan, uh, what is that present day. So, as I get more and more into all this stuff, I just wanted to touch basis on a couple of points here. Uh, you know, we know John 1 and 1, or John 1, 1, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men, and the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. Jesus is the light of the world, and He came to set the captives free in Him. And through him, we are set free by the covering of his blood. So I told you I was going somewhere with that. I just, for some reason, uh, I got diverted or kind of shifted over to this today. I was kind of studying this. 
Um, and um, I was uh, told to go ahead and read this. Uh, it's Bible-based. Don't get jumpy. It's right out of John 1.1. 1, 1. And uh, there's some points uh, out of Ephesians as well with the armor of God. And so we need to put that armor of God on every day. It's imperative in this battle that, uh, that we do. And uh, so that's why, uh, you know, that's why the reason why I'm kind of diverting a little bit from Luke. Now we already read, or we're in John actually, I take that back because I, I read so much. Now we did read into John 1-1 one, one already, so now I'm in the 5. Just got done with Luke, now we're into John. Uh, it is a battle. It definitely is a battle. And, uh, you know, it's like the more... The more you get in touch with, uh, with the Bible, the more you get in touch with God, the more you stay on His path and His light. Uh, speaking of light, my cross is uh, really shining. Uh, there is a light coming off of that, which is really, really cool. It's like it's glowing. So when you watch the video, folks, you're going to see this thing. It's the, the cross is actually glowing. And... Uh, it just is a reminder to me that uh, I am on God's path. This is God's radio. I'm just a vessel. I'm just a voice. Just getting his message out. And uh, so that's why I sound a little bit weary, a little bit tired. Uh, as uh, those know that, uh, you know, as we are in this spiritual battle uh, against uh, the devil and against uh, the, you know all the stuff that's going on we uh, we're battle weary I guess I, I just you know I feel like I've been dragged through the mud a million times and then backed over by a diesel truck uh, I'm pretty exhausted and uh, but the battle must go on you know we, the fight must go on we've got to fight against this every day and, uh, but it's easy when you trust God, when you have faith and you believe in God. So that's why my urgency, that's why I'm getting this message out. I mean, this is strong and powerful. John 1, 1, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. And the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him. And without Him was not anything made that was made. In him was life. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine? In him was life. That's uh, some amazing comfort. And the life was the light of men, and the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended not. Jesus is the light of the world, and he came to set the captives free. In him, through him, we are set free by the covering of his blood. Uh, so, oh my God, folks. Uh, talk about, you know, some more revelations. Now, I had to go back over that. I just, there was something that uh, maybe I thought I had missed, but, uh, you know, as I continue to build up the armor of God, as I continue to get the word out with that, uh, with that message of the armor of God. Now, this is all out of the Bible. This is out of Ephesians 6, 10 through 23. Uh, it's the same one I read every night. It's the same one that I've been told to read every night. Uh, this came from, now this was put together by, uh, by a friend of mine, by a pastor of mine that uh, I work with. And uh, he put it together straight out of the Bible. Uh, there's uh, a few little side notes, but there, there's nothing added. There's nothing uh, that's not biblical. So this is straight out of the scriptures. It's straight out of Ephesians 6:10:23, uh, and uh, I read this all the time. And uh, so, uh, just letting you all know, don't get jumpy. Uh, it's biblical. So finally be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Uh, put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. 
For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers and against the authorities and against the powers of this dark world and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armor of God so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground and after you have done everything to stand, stand firm and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all of this, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Amen. And pray in the spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert, folks. Uh, God is telling you to be alert. And always keep on praying for all the saints. So there, uh, there's a little bit of notes there. Uh, where's the other ones? I was trying to find the scriptures that I did. And where is it at? All right. And then I got a prayer. Some more notes and prayers and stuff like that. Uh, this is on fear. Now, I've read this before. It's out of uh, In Touch Ministries. It's a little card set that I got sent in. Uh, it's a prayer against fear. Father, how grateful I am for your awesome love for me. You know my fears and offer me your peace. Thank you for helping me overcome my apprehensions. Please reveal the origin of my fears so that they can be removed completely. I recognize that I am facing a faith battle today. Therefore, Lord, please continue to give me strength and encourage me with your word. Uh, show me who you are so I can stand strong against these fears and declare in faith my God is wiser, more loving, and more powerful than any problem I will ever face. Day by day, Help me to place my focus on your faithful character and unfailing principles so that I can be a person of courage and conviction. But thank you, Father, for helping me lay down my fears on the basis of who you are and what you have promised me. I do not have to be afraid because you are always with me. You are my God and you will strengthen and uphold me with your righteous right hand, truly. You are worthy of all the honor, glory, power, and praise. And my soul rests in you, amen, and in Jesus' name we pray, amen. So, there's a few of them, but I just wanted to read that one on fear because that, that's what I've been dealing with, and that's what the, uh, what the devil's been attacking me with. And so, uh, I put that back on him. And uh, I'll let him deal with it. So I give it to God and I let him handle it because he's got it. So the devil, what I was, what I was, people might have got mislost there, uh, figured, couldn't figure that out. What I was saying was I give all that fear, I give that to God and let him take care of it. Because uh, the battle's already been won. And I just got to remember that. I got to apply these stuff, this stuff that I'm learning and this stuff that I'm giving out. I've got to apply this. And so uh, that's what I'm doing. And that's why the urgency of why I keep doing these podcasts. It's, uh, I get something out of it. Um, and uh, God puts these words in me. I'm just a vessel, folks. Like I said, I'm just a vessel getting his message out. And uh, it's, it's, you know, we need this. We need this word. Uh, so I'm going to get into it here. Uh, I just wanted to kind of ramble a little bit, give you a little bit of info, some little nuggets for you. Getting that coffee going. Uh, forgot to make some, actually. And um, luckily, I just had a little bit, uh, about a cup and a half left. So you know where we're at. Live Grace Ministries, Minister Preacher Rick Rowley here, live on the air, simulcast over at Twitter, and uh, kind of out of breath a little bit, um, just uh, kind of been one of them days running around, and uh, you know, just 
feel like I've been in a battle, folks, and I realize I am. Uh, so uh, I'm just, uh, you now instead of running away, I'm sprinting to the cross because uh, that's where it's at. That is the answer. That's where we need to be at the foot of the cross, not running away from it. And uh, so I applied it, and uh, I'm on it. God's got me on it. God's got me where he needs me. And so this is where I'm kind of getting this message out, going into the scripture, getting into Luke here, getting into John, getting into Matthew, getting into Mark. Uh, we just finished this morning with the woman at the well, and uh, and now we're jumping to the next one. I'll pull that podium over here in a little bit here. We'll start reading that. And I'm going to give you uh, just a few more of the, st you know, the same ones kind of I've been reading, but this is really important and uh, needs to get out. Uh, Romans 10, 9, 21. And uh, what we got here? This is the sinner's prayer. This is the prayer of salvation from Romans 9, uh, 10, 9, 21. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth, or with thy mouth, the Lord Jesus, uh, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and the mouth confession is made unto salvation. As we go into 11 and 12 here, or more actually, I'm going to go through the whole thing. For the scripture saith, whosoever believe on him shall not be ashamed. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. For the same Lord over all his rich unto all that call upon him. For whoever uh, shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Amen, I believe it. And how then shall they call on him whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? Uh, and how shall they preach except they be sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring good tidings of good things. But they have all not obeyed the gospel for Esaias or Isaiah saith, Lord, who hath believed our report. So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. But I say, have they not heard? Yes, verily, their sound went into all the earth, and the words into the ends of the world. But I say, did not Israel know? First Moses saith, I will provoke you to jealousy by them that are no people. And by the foolish nation I will anger you. But Esaias, or Isaiah, is very bold, and saith, I was found of them that sought me not. I was made manifest unto them that asked not after me. But to Israel he saith, All day long I have stretched forth my hands unto a disobedient and gainsaying people. Uh, so... We know, we know, we know, we've got it. So surrender yourself completely to the Lord. Apply God's promises to your everyday life. Trust Him no matter what comes your way. When we build our lives on the truth of God's Word, we are building on an eternal foundation that cannot be destroyed. Amen. Uh, Let's see. Well, we're going to get into that here. Well, we already did, actually. Uh, John 3, 15, 17, folks. You know what that says. That whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Now, I don't know why I didn't highlight that. I think I missed that last time because I was trying to do something else. Um, that's what happens when you got so many notes. I, my notes have notes on top of my notes. I know. So, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, 
but have everlasting life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. For grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not your own doing, but is a free gift of God, not a result of works, so that no one may boast. Amen. All right. Uh, John 10, 27, 30. We're going to get into that here pretty soon here. And my sheep listen to my voice. I know them and they follow me and I give them eternal life and they shall never perish. No one will snatch them out of my hand. Nobody. No one. Isaiah 54, 17. No weapons against you shall prosper and every tongue which rises against you in judgment you shall condemn. This is the heritage of the servant of the Lord, and the righteousness is from me, says the Lord. Right, so let me go back over here. Isaiah 40, 11, How our Lord cares for his sheep. How often he lifts us when we are low and supports us when we are weak. He gathers the lambs in him and carries them close to his heart. He gently leads those that are with young. Amen. So, what are we doing here? I don't know. What are we doing? I know what I'm doing. I'm reading. I'm reading the scriptures for you. Uh, and for me as well. So, as I came into heavy attack this morning, uh, once again, uh, that devil... Put that, uh, tried to uh, take me out this morning again a couple of times and uh, had that spirit of discouragement and that fear. And uh, then I just threw the word right back at him. And so, folks, if it sounds like I'm a little tired, if it sounds like my throat's hurting a little bit, uh, it's because I had it out with the devil this morning. Twice, uh, twice I got attacked. And uh, so I'm a little bit battle warden here this morning, or this afternoon, I guess. It's, well, it's the evening now. Good grief, that's where my time goes. Uh, as I studied more and read more and just kept in the scriptures all day and focused and stuff, had some things running around. But as, uh, you know, as I was trying to read, he kept trying to just attack. It was just constant attacks. And so um, a little confusing. And uh, a little battle learn today. But I'm standing on that word. Uh, I've already got my, uh, I already got the uh, God's battle plans here. So I know where I'm going. And uh, with his light uh, making way ahead of for me, uh, the path is clear. The directions are clear. And uh, we're, I'm putting a devil behind me. And he's got no authority over me. I will not give him the authority. So the closer I get, you know, the, the more of the tax it happened. And so, uh, but I'm standing on his word. I, 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 oh my God, folks. Uh, it's, uh, it's something else. Like I said, the, the attacks have come and, and, and hit me. These waves keep coming. And uh, I get these shifts again, and I, I just want to retract and uh, walk away. But God's got control. And so I stand on his word knowing that he is the one. He is. I am. And so, uh, you know, that's, I, I am not going to go backwards again. He, uh, he's got right where he, he's got me right where he wants me. And uh, so I put God first and uh, choose the light. And uh, so that's where I'm going. So Jeremiah 29, 11, 13, For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. Then shall ye call upon me, and ye shall go and pray unto me, and I will hearken unto you, and ye shall seek me and find me. When ye shall search for me with all your heart, and, okay, and that was adding with the other one. So there we go. So we got that one down. Um, 
All right, so that's where we're going. We're gonna jump into, into uh, where are we at here? We're John. Uh, oh, let's see. No, that was okay. So we're gonna go into this. Let me get the big book over for you, folks. Um, all right. So as I try to get everything over, um. My, uh, I don't know why this thing doesn't want to like sit still for some reason. Um, uh, all right, checking social media here for a second here. So uh, hold on. Uh, just give me a second here, folks. Um, Uh, sorry about the dead air. Just trying to uh, get this get this message out here. Um, so uh, that's why. But we are gonna go into this. We I, I've got a mission. God has given me directions and orders, and He has put this in front of me, and uh, I am not going. Uh, to divert off of what uh, he has me doing, this task. Uh, it's not uh, It's not a hard, well, it is a hard, you'd say it's a hard task. But it's his mission. As, uh, you know, I had these visions and uh, saw, uh, you know, saw the, the, his, his disciples asleep. And as he came, went out to pray and he came back and his disciples were there sleeping, he said, what you couldn't stay awake for me one more hour and uh so that shook me this whole thing shook me up and so this is why the urgency of getting this message out and so i'm trying and uh you know as as i deal with daily tasks and daily missions um uh, trying to um, keep focus on this so we're gonna go because that's what he's trying to do he's trying to shut these things down and uh, he has been throwing these waves at me of confusion and anger and hatred. And uh, it's not going to happen. The dude's just got to give up. Because, uh, all right, so I'm just kind of pausing here for a second. Uh, I will get through this. Chapter 5, which is the Pool of Bethsaida, or Bethesda. Holy cow. I saw another word in there. Not going to happen. Uh, all right. After this, there was a feast of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. But there is at Jerusalem by the sheep market a pool, uh, by the sheep market, which is called in Hebrew tongue Bethesda, having five porches. And these lay a great multitude of, uh, I think it says important folk, of blind or impotent folk, of blind halt withdraw a uh, withered uh, waiting for the moving of the water for an angel went down in a certain season into the pool and troubled the water whosoever then first after the troubling of the water stepped in uh, was made whole of whatsoever disease he had and a certain man was there which had an infirmity 30 and 8 years wow 38 years for that when Jesus saw him lie and knew that he had been now a long time in that case, uh, he said unto them, or him, Wilt thou be made whole? Now the eminent man answered him, Sir, I have no man. When the water is troubled to put me into the pool, but while I am coming, another steppeth down before me. And Jesus said unto him, Rise. Take up thy bed and walk. And immediately the man was made whole and took up his bed and walked. And on the same day was the Sabbath. 
and the Jews therefore unto him that was cured it is the Sabbath day and it is not lawful for thee to carry thy bed well he answered them he that made me whole the same said unto me take up thy bed and walk when then asked they him what man is that which said unto thee take up your take up thy bed and walk yeah just getting some notes written down here all right sorry i uh, uh yep. um, okay well for some reason i'm getting really sleepy and uh god is waking me up to read this because he said uh not to fall asleep and so as i battle this i will so we're getting to this 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 dude sitting by the water he can't get in nobody will take him in nobody will put him in and so this is the uh this is the the calling the hole behind it thing uh jesus saith unto him as we see in eight rise take thy bed and walk and immediately the man was made whole and took up his bed and walked and on the same day this was the sabbath so this is what we're doing here this is what we're showing um so he answered them and he that made me whole the same said unto me taketh up thy bed and walk then asked thy or they him i'm gonna get this hang on what man is that which said unto thee take up thy bed and walk uh and he that was healed healed i say healed amen now i know and i'm starting to sound like a preacher there we go i'm getting the fire back come on i know the holy spirit standing right by there he's poking me he's like all right you dragged enough let's get that spirit back in you because that's what i gave you what are you doing with it i know it's like that toolbox i keep saying good grief all right let's get that preacher spirit going rise take the bed and walk and he did and he started cruising around and he's not running around this thing and he's like i rose up out all right now that's not in there i'm just making that up so don't get jumpy hold on here 10 the jews which is the bad guys uh therefore said unto them him that was cured it is the sabbath day and we're not talking about black sabbath they were way ahead of their time these dudes were talking about the sabbath day there we go that's the spirit of the preacher coming out um I guess that coffee must have kicked in finally uh, as I see the words and I read it and uh, you know this uh, this devil's got to go uh, I it's time to t take our authority back I go through this every time and uh, I know better and so this time I stood up to him uh, I feel like I have been dragged through the mud like I said I feel like I have been battle weary and uh, so that's the wear and tear on my throat as I, I did uh, a couple of podcasts this morning and uh, you know the weather's been changing we've been getting cold uh, cold weather and a little bit of rain uh, so uh, that's got something to do with it too and, uh, so we're just gonna keep rolling here uh, so uh, yep there we go uh, I know, I know, I'm getting there. Hang on, give me a second. Uh, I'm just trying to keep my voice going here. As I get that mud, good grief, that's what I needed. All right, all right already. Uh, where are we at? Uh, 12. Uh, then asked by him, or they, you know, what man is that which said unto thee take up thy bed and walk i'm going to go back over this again and he that was healed with uh, wist not who it was he didn't remember he didn't see it he was like boom there so for jesus had conveyed himself away 
a multitude being in that place. Afterward, Jesus findeth him in the temple, and he said unto him, Behold, thou art made whole. Sin no more, lest a worse thing come unto thee. Wow. The man departed and told the Jews that it was Jesus, which had made him whole. And therefore, did the Jews persecute Jesus and sought to slay him? because he had done these things on the Sabbath day. So as I go back over this, now, uh, let's see, now I'm going to go back into two a little bit. Now there at, is at Jerusalem by the sheep market a pool, which is called in the Hebrew tongue uh, Bethesda, or Bethesda, having five porches. So this talks about the pool, the moving water, which I was reminded is the waves, talks about the waves, like I like, like explained. This is the waves that I've been going through. And uh, I get it now. I see the, con the connection of going through these waves. And uh, I, I just, I already know as I'm getting closer so I'm I'm getting it, and it's 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 a huge revelation, of uh, of a revelation. It's a revelation of a revelation. I get it now. I know. Uh, amazing. So the son's relationship. Uh, let's see. I think we talked about that. Uh, let's go back over here into 15. The man departed and told the Jews that it was Jesus, which had made him whole. And therefore did the Jews persecute Jesus and sought to slay him because he had done these things on the Sabbath day. Now the son's relationship with the father. Uh, but Jesus answered him, My father worketh here or hitherto, and I work. Therefore the Jews sought, to, uh, sought the more to kill him because he not only had broken the Sabbath, but said also that God was his father, making himself equal with God. Then answered Jesus and said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, the son can do nothing of himself, but what he seeth the father do. For what things soever he doeth, these also doeth, the Son likewise. Uh, for the Father, for the Father loveth the Son and showeth him all things that himself doeth, and he will show him greater works than these that ye may marvel. And it's true. It's true. Um, for as the Father raiseth up the dead and quickeneth them, even so the Son quickeneth whom he will. For the Father judgeth no man, but hath committed all judgment unto the Son, that all men should honor the Son even as they honor the Father, and honoreth not the Son, honoreth not the Father which hath sent him. Verily, or verily, I say unto you, he that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life. And uh, where did I go here? I got last. And hath given. Let's see. Go back. I'm going back. I'm going back. Uh, verily, verily, I say unto you, he that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation that is passed from death unto life. Verily, uh, verily, I say unto you, the hour is coming and now is when the dead shall hear the voice of the Son uh, of God. And they that hear shall live. For as the Father hath life in himself, so hath he given to the Son to have life in himself. And hath given him authority. 
to execute judgment also, because he is the Son of Man. Marvel not at this, for the hour is coming, in the which all that are in the graves shall hear his voice, uh, and shall come forth. They that have done good unto the resurrection of life, and they that have done evil unto the re resurrection of damnation. Good grief. I can of mine own self do nothing. As I hear, I judge, and my judgment is just. Because I seek not my own will, but the will of the Father, which has sent me. Uh, man. Talk about revelation. Where are we at? Where are we at? Good grief. Marvel not at this, for the hour is coming in which all that are in the grave shall hear his voice and shall come forth. They that have done good unto the resurrection of life and they that have done evil unto the resurrection of the damnation. Now, I didn't put the, the, I just added it. I can of mine own self do nothing. As I hear, I judge. And my judgment is just, because I seek not my own will, but the will of the Father which has sent me. If I bear witness of myself, my witness is not true. There is another that beareth witness of me, and I know that the witness which he witnesseth of me is true. Good grief, that's a tongue twister. Ye sent it to John, and he bear witness unto the truth. But I receive not testimony from man, but these things I say, that ye might be saved. Uh, he, was, he was a burning and a shining light, and ye were willing for a season to rejoice in his light. But I have greater witness than that of John for the words which the Father hath given me to finish. The same works that I do bear witness of me that he or the Father hath sent me. And the Father himself which hath sent me hath borne witness of me. Ye have never heard his voice at any time nor seen his shape. Uh, and, ye, and ye have not his word abiding in you for whom he saith or he hath sent. Him ye believe not. Search the scriptures. I'm getting there. Hang on. Search the scriptures. For in them ye think ye have eternal life, and they are uh, they which testify of me. And ye will not come to me that ye might have life. Now let me go back over that again. Did you hear that, folks? Very subtle. Now, this is what I'm talking about with this surface preaching, this surface skimming preaching. I was directly and specifically told to go deep into the scripture, root it out, go to the root, go read the entire scripture, and preach from within the word, deep underneath. And so this is what I'm trying to do. This is what I'm doing. This is what I was told to do. And so like I said, folks, these uh, th this is going to be deep-rooted. So pull up your boots. Grab your socks. Put the socks over the top of the socks. Pull up your hip boots because we're rooting in deep, folks. Uh, no more uh, no more of the surface skimming preaching. Uh, it's not. We're not going to do that. Um, now, I was doing it in the beginning. I was just kind of skimming over the top of stuff and picking stuff out. Uh, or kind of bouncing around a little bit. But as I was redirected, and uh, now this is what I'm talking about, my shifts. I, I hear that all the time. And uh, I, was, I was definitely in these waves that I've been getting. Uh, some good, some bad. Some really dark depression. And I, I, I know too much in the Word to let that affect me. Uh, and so 
Uh, that's what he said. No more surface skimming preaching. Uh, it's not, uh, we're not going to do that. So it's, it's time to get deep, folks, and uh, re-root the roots of the Bible. And uh, just hold on, because I got a ton more to go. We're not even just, we're just scratching the surface here. Uh, so this part here, as we are into five, it says, search the scriptures. Uh, hello, this is what we're doing. So search the scriptures, for in them ye think ye have eternal life, and they are they which testify of me. And ye shall not come to me that ye might have life. I receive not honor from men, but I know you, that ye have not the love of God in you. Now this is out of the King James Version, folks. So as, <laughs> if you have not figured that out, that's what I'm reading from. Uh, I, I, yeah, I, I was just told to read into this, and, and this is what I've been doing. So I hope you figured that out. Um, but here, we're going to go back. Uh, I think I'm going to go back into 41 again. Uh, I receive not honor from him, or men, but I know you, that you, or ye, uh, have not the love of God in you. I am come in my Father's name, and ye receive me not. If another shall come in his own name, him ye will receive. How can ye believe which, re, uh, which receive honor one of another, and seek not the honor that cometh from God only? Wow. Uh, revelation right there just uh, kind of just shook me to the to, shook me to the root there. Uh, how can ye believe which re uh, which receive honor one of another and seek not the honor that cometh from God only? Do not think that I will accuse you to the Father. There is one that accuseth you, even Moses, in whom ye trust. For had ye believed Moses, ye would have believed me. For he wrote of me. But if ye believe not his writings, how shall ye believe my words? Yeah, wow. Uh, Revelations um, chapter 6. Jesus feeds 5,000 dudes. Well, there's some women and kids thrown in there too, but you know what I'm saying. He feeds the folks the food that, uh, that uh, nourishes their body. I was going somewhere with that, just hang on, I'm throwing some antidotes in there. So now we're talking about uh, after these things, Jesus went over to the Sea of Galilee, which is the Sea of uh, Tiberias. That's it. Ah, you thought I was going to stumble on it, but I know what it is. And a great multitude followed him. Thousands followed the dude. He's up on this hill. He's talking about fish. He's talking about some bread. So hold on, he's going somewhere with this. And a great multitude followed him. That's what, what did I just say? It was like a rock concert outside on a hill. But there was the best rock concert ever. The cornerstone of Christ right there, live. Uh, it's like a, it was like a big festival. Uh, so he was giving out this, this, oh man, wait until you hear this, folks. I know you've read this before, but wait until you hear this. Uh, and a great multitude followed him because they saw his miracles, which he did on them that were diseased. Uh, and Jesus went up in a mountain, or into a mountain, there he sat with his disciples, the 12 brothers that were hanging out with the dude. Cool. That's, wow, that would be awesome. And now we're talking about the Passover. 
the feast of the Jews was nigh. Did we not just get done talking about the Passover, folks? Uh, yeah, we did. All right, so here we go. When Jesus was lifted up his eyes, then lifted up his eyes, and saw a great company coming into him, and he saith unto Philip, Whence shall we buy bread that these may eat? See, he already showed, right there he showed doubt. I know, it was like, a, I feel like that was like a direct message right to me. At that instant, he showed doubt. Whence shall we buy bread that these may eat? Did he not, did the dude just not see all the miracles Jesus already performed? Has he not watched what he's been doing? Uh, hello? And this he said to prove him. What he did, I, I, wow. For he himself knew what he would do. And Philip answered him, 200 penny worth of bread is not sufficient for them, that every one of them may take a little. O oh, ye of little faith. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, saith unto him, There is a lad here which hath five barley loaves and two small fishes. So they only had a little bit of bread and, a, and, a, and like a little guppy fish or something. I don't, I don't know what that was, but uh, it looks like it was just like a little guppy fish. Two of them. Uh, those fishies. Uh, that's for my, uh, my friends there. But what are they among so many? See, another example of doubt. I told you I was going somewhere with this. Just hold on. Um... So there's already two examples of doubt. He's, they've been walking with Jesus all this whole time. All these miracles, the water and the wine, all this stuff that he's been showing them, and they're still doubting. Oh, ye of little faith. Uh, and Jesus said, make the men sit down. Now there was much grass in the place, so the men sat down in a number about, are you ready for this? 5,000 people. Man. Uh, that's a lot of mouths to feed, folks. Just think about that. And all he had was that little bit. But this is the miracle of Christ. Listen to what he said. Listen to what he did here. And Jesus took the loaves, and we had get, he had given thanks. He distributed to the disciples and the disciples to them that were set down. And likewise of the fishes, as much as they would. When they were filled, he said unto his disciples, Gather up the fragments that remain, that nothing be lost. Now, like I said, this is out of the King James. So the interpretation or the lettering of the wording might be a little bit different in the New King James. Um, because it's just a little bit different. So... Just hold on. Don't get jumpy. Uh, leave that to me. I'm jumping into the Word. I'm getting froggy with it, folks. I am getting froggy with the Word. i got to get this out. This is what he asked me to do. This is what i got to do. Uh, so, when they were filled, he said unto his disciples, Gather up the fragments that remain, that nothing be lost. Therefore, they gathered them together and filled twelve baskets. Are you, are you counting the numbers, folks? Twelve baskets with the fragments of the five barley loaves. Uh, which remained over and above unto them that had eaten. Then those men, when they had seen the miracle that Jesus did, hallelujah, the miracle of Jesus again and again and again, and again, oh my God, folks, come on. This is of truth. That prophet that should come into the world. Now, here we go again. He's doing another miracle. This is when the dude walks on water. Golly. Have they not seen enough miracles yet 
to still have downs? I'm getting to this. Now, hold on. This is cool. 15. When Jesus therefore perceived that they would come and take him by force uh, to make him a king, he departed again into the mountain himself alone. So he retreated. Now, here, hang on. I'm getting somewhere. And when even was now come, his disciples went down into the sea and entered into a ship uh, and went over the sea towards Capernaum. And it was now dark, and Jesus was not come to them yet. And the sea arose by reason of a great wind that blew. And no, I don't have any sound effects, and I'm not going to go, because that would be the wind. I'm not doing it. I just actually, I fooled you. Gotcha. So here we go. We're in a storm. Uh, and the sea arose by reason of a great wind that blew. So when they had rowed about five and twenty or thirty furlongs, now you got to look that up. There's a little bit of history and a little bit of a, a mathematical quiz or quiz, I guess, questions and stuff in there for you. Uh, where did it go here? So when they rowed about five and twenty or 30 furlongs, add those up, see what you get. They see Jesus. Now the dude's walking across. Let me get this thing over. I just knocked. I got so excited, I knocked my Bible. And am I. So the dude's walking on water. Are you kidding? What? what? Christ is walking on the water, and they're still freaking out. They're still having doubts. Uh -uh. Oh, my God. Uh, and drawing nigh into the ship, and they were afraid. See? Fear. I know he's speaking right to me. Dude, you have fear. Why? I showed you all these miracles. I've been showing you all this, giving you all this stuff. And you have these doubts and fears. I know. Quit poking me in the shoulder because I hear you. I get it. I know he's still going to do that because he's laughing now. <laughs> I know. I get it. And this is a direct, like he's just telling me. Quit doubting and quit having fear. So I won't. I get it. It is I. And that's what he's now he's saying this. Because they were afraid. They were freaking out. They see some dude walking on across the water. And he's like, ah, who's that? Well, here's what he said. He said unto them, it is I. Be not afraid. And then they willingly received him. Uh, into the ship, and immediately the ship was at the land whither they went. Oh my God. The day following, now we're teaching in Capernaum. So the day following, when the people which stood on the other side of the sea saw that there was none other boat there, save that one wherein his disciples were entered, and that Jesus went not with his disciples into the boat, and that his disciples were gone away alone. So he sent them on a trip, because he had to go take care of some father business here. How be it, there came other boats from Tiberias, as nigh unto the place where they did eat bread. After that, the Lord gave him thanks. When the people therefore saw that Jesus was not there, neither his disciples, they also took shipping and came to Capernaum, seeking for Jesus. When they had found him on the other side of the sea, they said unto him, Rabbi, when camest thou hither? Jesus answered them and said, Verily, now this is Jesus speaking here. So he said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, You seek me not because you see the miracles, but because you did eat of the loaves and were filled. Labor not for the meat with which perish, but for that meat, 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 where did that word come from? I just, that, that's not even a word. It says meat, which endureth unto everlasting life. Uh, yeah, which the Son of Man shall give unto you, for him hath God the Father sealed. Now, if that's not a wake up, 
if that's not a direct message, uh, I gotta put some uh, highlighting on that thing because uh, I missed it before. I don't know why, but uh, so there we go. And where are we at? What are we doing? Do we know what we're doing here, folks? Well, you're on live, uh, on the air, in, across the globe, across the country. Uh, everybody that's got Wi-Fi, if you can hear this, uh, you're getting filled uh, just like Jesus filled those 5,000 on the hill, folks. I got some food for your soul. Amen. Throw in that four-letter word that we love to use. Now that's a four-letter word we can chomp on. Amen, amen, amen. Throw in some hallelujahs out there. Brothers and sisters, family and friends, saints and sinners, we're giving you the word. We're giving you the bread of life. Now here it come because I'm getting to that. So just hold on to your booties. We got words coming, folks. I got a ton more. I know, I almost went into a British accent for no apparent reason. It just happens. The spirit is so overwhelming that uh, I just am the voice. He just gives me this message. So, yeah, don't worry. I'm not going to break into random uh, British accents. Well, I might. Just hold on. Hold on. Wait a minute here. So, uh, then said they unto him, What shall we do that we might work the works of God? Uh, okay, I skipped up. See, that's what happens. I get so excited, I skip over the scriptures or the verses. So I'm going to go back. And no, I'm not going to do a backward reverse voice. I don't do that. I'm just going to go back over 27, 28. Labor not for the meat which perishes, but for that meat which endureth it unto everlasting life, which the Son of Man shall give unto you, for him hath God the Father sealed. Now, 28. Then said they unto him, What shall we do? Uh, that we might work, or work the works of God. And Jesus answered and said unto them, This is the work of God, and that ye believe on him whom he hath sent. Uh, they said therefore unto him, What sign showest thou then that we may see and believe thee? What dost thou work? See, the dudes were still doubting. I know. He's standing there poking me, going, do I need to sell, show you any more signs? Are you still in doubt? Folks, I'm telling you, it's right here. I get it. Do you get it? All right, I hope so. Uh, I am the bread of life. Um, I am the bread of life so i will not uh, where am i at where am i at where am i at what am i doing here do we know what i'm doing i do i really do i do know what i'm doing i am reading the word of life the bread of life uh, <laughs> uh amen so, I am the bread of life. Are you picking up what God's given you? I hope so. Our fathers did eat manna in the desert, as it is written. He gave them bread from heaven to eat. Um, good grief here. All right. Uh, well, we took a pause for the cause. Amen. We're speaking again. Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Moses gave you not that bread from heaven, but my Father giveth you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is which 
cometh down from heaven and giveth life unto the world. Then said they unto him, Lord, evermore give us this bread. And Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger, and he that believeth on my on me what shall never thirst. Oh my God. Did you get that, folks? Did you see that connection there? Then he said unto them, Lord, evermore give us this bread. And Jesus, now Jesus is throwing this right back at him. Dudes, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger, and he that believeth on, my, on me shall never thirst. Did he not just tell the woman at the well, in Capri uh, where was that, uh, the Samaritan woman, did he not just tell her the same thing? That must be tattooed on him or something. It must be in his notes or something. Did he not just say that? He did. He just talked to the woman at the well and he told her the same thing. You will never thirst from the water I give you. You will never be hungry from the food that I give you. Oh, man. I want that. Well, I already got it. I received it. Amen. Uh, but I said unto you, now my notes are falling over again. My Bible's drop kicking over here but i said unto you that ye also have seen me and believe not uh now how many times does this come up you see it you see his miracles you know that he's there you still don't believe it what more must he do to get you to believe that he is there he's given you the word he's given you the messages he's given you the miracles this is why I've been telling, I've been saying this, that uh, the urgency, he woke me up in the middle of a dream, or just kind of snoozing and sleeping here, he woke me up and said, the spirit is grieving, people are forgetting about Christ, and you are going to deliver the message. I'm like, yeah, right, tell me something else. He's like, no, uh, dude, I'm really serious. You're going to preach this message out. You're going to get the word out to people. They won't listen to me. They won't listen to others. They're, they're going to listen to you. Well, as I go in and out of doubts and fears, this was the direction. This is where I'm talking about, folks. This is what he said. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. In that particular order. Don't go to the back. You already read Revelations. You're not there. You're going to go do that again. But you're going to go through the New Testament. Uh, the birth, the death, the resurrection, and the ascension. To get people to see that why the Spirit is grieving. Do not worry about the words. I will give you the words. The Spirit of, uh, what was he saying? He said something about the Spirit of speech. And not to fear. Well, uh, I know what's in here. I know what the Bible says. And I know what I know. Because it's all I know. I know. That probably didn't make no sense to nobody. But it does to me. Because I'm just preaching the word, folks. I'm just ministering you the truth. Uh, as I've been uh, by the Holy Spirit led speech in my vocabularies which i'm trying to say ah uh, he's telling me this is what i want you to do uh and who doesn't want a free gift folks grace unmerited unearned and undeserved it's a free gift a gratis gift of god amen all right so you're probably sitting there going okay uh minister when are you gonna actually speak I did. I'm giving you some antidotes here. Hold on. Pull up your socks. Get your booties on. Grab your uh, grab your booties. We're going into the Word. But I said unto you that ye also have seen me and believe not. 
All that the Father giveth me shall uh, come to me, and him that cometh to me I will in no wise cast out. For I came down from heaven, not to do my own will, but the will of him that sent me. And this is the Father's will which hath sent me, that all which he hath given me I should loose nothing, but shall, uh, but should raise it up again at the last day. Now this is going to come into play. You're going to get this. So hold on. Uh, it's pretty cool. Uh, so, in 40, and this is the will of him that, I'll mark this down, that sent me that everyone which seeth the Son and believeth on him may have everlasting life. And I will raise him up at the last day. The Jews then murmured at him because he said, I am the bread which came down from heaven. They didn't get it. He was dropping clues and hints on him, and they didn't get it. But they will. Stay tuned. There's more where that came from. And they said, Is not this Jesus the son of Joseph, whose father and mother was not, which, uh, let's see, where did he say it? Mother we know. Yeah, how is it that he saith, I came down from heaven? See, they're trying to justify it, folks. They were trying to justify all the miracles that he was doing. So Jesus therefore answered and said unto them, Murmur not among yourselves. No man can come to see me except the Father which has sent me to draw him, and I will raise him up at the last day. It is written in the prophets, and they shall be all taught of God. Every man therefore that hath heard and hath learned of the Father cometh unto me. Not that any man hath seen the Father, get, uh, save he which is of God, he hath seen the Father. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me hath everlasting life. Now isn't that a cool comfort? Knowing that he's saying this, that he's giving you this. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me hath everlasting life. I am the bread of life. Your fathers did eat manna in the wilderness and are dead. This is the bread which cometh down from heaven that a man may eat therefore and not die. I am the living bread which come down from heaven, or came down from heaven. If any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh, uh, which I will give for the life of the world. Now, mark that down. That will be in your test later on. I'm just kidding. I'm not testing. But God is asking, where are you sleeping when Jesus calls your name? That's the whole point. This is why I'm doing this stuff. Uh, the Jews therefore strove among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? Yuck! It's not literally his flesh. It's figuratively. He said, I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. The Jews therefore strove among themselves, murmuring, saying, now I threw murmuring, it's not in there, saying, how can this man give us his flesh to eat? Then Jesus said unto them, verily, verily, I say unto you, Except, now this is part of the communion. This is, uh, I just ran right through my house here. All right. So, this is key. Um, I'm going to have to mark that down myself. The key to uh, the communion here. And then Jesus said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Except ye eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, ye have no life in you. 
Whoso eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood hath eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. For my flesh is meat indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. He that eateth my flesh and drinketh of my blood dwelleth in me, and I in him. As the living Father hath sent me, and I live by the Father, so that eateth me, he that eateth me, even shall he shall live by me. This is that bread which came down from heaven, not as your fathers did eat, manna, and are dead, but, or he, that eateth of this bread shall, what? Shall live forever. How cool is that? These things said he is in the synagogue as he taught in Capernaum. Many, therefore, of his disciples, when they heard this, said, This is a hard saying. Who can hear it? When Jesus knew in himself that his disciples murmured at it, they were grumbling and murmuring and murmuring and grumbling, good grief. And he said unto them, Doth this offend you? What? And if ye shall see the Son of Man ascend up where he was before, it is the Spirit that quickeneth, the flesh profited nothing. Nothing, I say, nothing. It profited nothing. I'm telling you, it's right there. It profited nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirits, and they are life. I told you I had the spirit of the preacher in me. I'm just saying. Oh, my goodness. For there are some of you that believe not. Did I just not say that? That's the reason for the urgency. Because... We, we don't believe him. We see all the signs. We know what's happening. We know that he, through him we have peace. Erg, no wonder why he's so irked. Nobody will listen to him. And he's showing us all the miracles. He's showing all the signs. He's giving us the word. And no wonder why he's so irked and, and the spirit is grieving. Because nobody believes him. Well, he's, he's got my attention. I don't know about you, but he's got my attention. So, as we go into 63, it is the spirit that quickeneth the flesh, profited nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. But there are some of you, oh, foolish, foolish, foolish souls, there are some of you that believe not. For Jesus knew from the beginning. Now I'm gonna mark that down in my uh, in my uh, my preacher notes here. Uh, for Jesus knew from the beginning that they were not or there they were that believe not. Who should betray him? Yeah, we see that before. And he said, therefore said unto you, that no man can come unto me except if were given uh, unto him of my father. Peter's confession, Mark 1. Peter's confession, part 1. I know, that's my radio voice. That's all I got. Don't ask me for it. All right. We're getting into Peter's confession, part 1. Verse 66. In, where are we at? We're in six. Going into seven. Good grief. Do you got time? Are you hanging out? I appreciate you guys being here. We're almost at 10 o'clock. Good grief. Time flies when you're having fun. From that time, many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. Then said Jesus unto the twelve, Will ye also go away? Then Simon Peter answered him and said, Lord, to whom shall we go? Thou hast the words of eternal life. Ah, uh, yep. Right there. To whom 
Where did he say? Where is this at? Where did he go? Where ye also go away? Then Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? Thou hast the words of eternal life, and we believe and are sure that thou art Christ, the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus answered him, Have not I chosen you twelve? And one of you is a devil. He spake of Judas Iscariot, the son of Simon. For he it was that should betray him, being one of the twelve. Good grief. Chapter 7. Ah, uh, let's see what we got at 7, folks. Now, seven's pretty deep. I think we got one more. Uh, we got time for one more. Uh, time permitting, God willing, we got time for seven. So let's go into chapter seven, and then we'll we'll uh, we'll stop at chapter eight as I'm getting my notes because I don't want to rush through this stuff, folks. I just don't. It's not. We got plenty of time to go through it. So that's what we shall do, shall we? Uh, this is getting good, folks. Uh, I hope you guys are getting this. I really do. Because I'm having fun reading this. As you can tell, I got the gift of gab and the spirit of preaching. Amen. It's in me. It's been there all the time. I just haven't ex uh, exercised it. Uh, so, uh, yeah. Chapter 7, Jesus teaching causes division. After these things, Jesus walked into Galilee, or in Galilee, for he would not walk in jewelry. That's not jewelry. That's jewelry. Because the Jews sought to kill him. Good grief. Those dudes had spears. They were going to hack him up. Not going to happen yet. It's getting there, but hang on. Let's just wait a minute. Now the Jews' feast of the tabernacles was at hand. His brethren therefore said unto him, Depart hence and go into Judea, that thy disciples also may see the works that thou doest. For there is no man that doeth anything in secret, and he himself seeketh to be known openly. If thou do these things, uh, show thyself to the world. But neither did his brethren believe in him. Uh, then uh, Jesus said unto them, My time is not yet come, but your time is always near already, always ready. The world cannot hate you, but me it hateth, because I testify of it, that the works therefore are evil, or thereof is evil. Go ye up into this feast, I go not up into, or go not up yet unto this feast. For my time is not yet come, or full come. When he had said this, these words unto them, he abode still in Galilee. But when his brethren had gone up, and he also up into the fest, not openly, but as it were in secret, then the Jews sought him at the feast and said, Where is he? And there was so much murmuring, there was much murmuring among the people concerning him, for some said, He is a good man. Others said, Nay, but he deceiveth the people. How by it no man spake openly of him for fears of the Jews. Now about the midst of the feast, Jesus went up into the temple and taught. And the Jews marveled, saying, How knoweth this man letters, having never learned? Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Jesus answered them and said, My doctrine is not mine, but his that sent me. 
If any man will do his will, he shall know of the doctrine, however, or whether it be of God or whether I speak of myself. Uh, amen. All right, we're just singing and dancing for the Lord God. Here. Jesus answered them, and he said, what did the dude say? I'm telling you, folks, this is exciting. Yep. Uh, where did we go? Did we get lost in the Word? Good grief. Are you awake yet? Did I put you to sleep? I hope not. I'm trying not to put you to sleep. I'm just excited about this Word. Uh, so, yeah, so Jesus answered and said, My doctrine is not mine, but his that sent me. If any man will do his will, and he shall know of the doctrine, uh, whether it be of God or whether I speak of myself, he that speaketh of himself seeketh his own glory, and he that seeketh his glory that sent him, the same is true, and no unrighteousness is in him. Did not Moses give you the law? And yet none of you keepeth the law. Ye hypocrites. Now, I just threw that in there. That is not in there. It just says, Yet none of you keepeth the law. Why go ye about to kill me? All right, a little moment say. Uh, so don't go sleeping, because the word is coming. I know, I can't help it. I'm so excited. I got the zeal. I got the preacher spirit. Can you feel it, folks? It's kind of a warm and fuzzy feeling. It makes you feel good all over. It is the gift that keeps on giving, amen? I know, that's all you're going to get out of me. I'm not going to do it. I know, he's poking me in the shoulder. He's like, I'm, I'm do it. I'm not going to do it. No. I'm just reading the word. Uh, he that speaketh of himself seeketh his own glory, but he that seeketh his glory has sent him, that sent him, the same is true, and no unrighteousness is in him. Amen. Did not Moses give you the law, and yet none of you keep the law? Why go ye about to kill me? Uh, 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 where'd we go? Oh, there we go. Did not Moses give you the law? I just said that. And yet none of you keep the law. Why go ye about to kill me? The people answered and said, Thou hast a devil. <clears throat> Where, uh, no, okay. Where thou hast a devil who goeth about to kill thee? Jesus answered and said unto them, I have done one work, and ye all marvel. Moses therefore gave unto you circumcision, not because it is of Moses, but of the fathers. And ye on the Sabbath day circumcise a man, and if a man on a Sabbath day, we're not talking about Black Sabbath, we're talking about the Sabbath day, the Black Sabbath, you know, as a band. This is not talking about that. We're talking about the celebration of the Sabbath here. So that's the difference. Now, just focus. Stay with me. Uh, Moses, therefore, gave unto you circumcision. So we read that. So if a man on a Sabbath day receives circumcision, uh, that the law of Moses should not be broken, are ye angry at me? Because I have made a man ever wit whole on the Sabbath day, judge not according to the appearance, but judge righteous judgment. Uh, then said some of them of Jerusalem, is not this he whom they seek to kill? But lo, he speaketh boldly. Did he not just say boldly? 
I'm checking the words twice. Because he said, speaketh boldly. I know. That's another poke in the shoulder. He's like, I told you. Speak boldly. Do not be fear of the words. I know. I got it. Good grief. Good night. Do the rulers know indeed that this is the very Christ? How be it? How be it? We know this man whence he is, but when Christ cometh, no man knoweth whence he is. Then cried Jesus in the temple as he taught, saying, Ye both know me, and ye know whence I am. And I am not come of myself, but... Where are we at? But, but, uh, I am, and I am not come of myself. But he that sent me is true, whom ye know not. Uh, but I know him, for I am from him, and he hath sent me. Then they sought to take him, but no man laid hand on him, because his hour was not yet come. And many of the people believed on him and said, When Christ cometh, will he do more miracles? than these which this man hath done? All right. Uh, yeah, taking a pause for the cause. Hey, Amen, because I got to get some coffee, man. Hey, you know what I mean? All right, and I'm getting quite done now. Now, that's that's my one and only British accent. Don't accept me to do it again. I'm getting quite to the near end now. And the Pharisees heard that the people murmured such things concerning him, and the Pharisees and the chief priests and officers take him. Then send, said Jesus unto him, Yet a little while I am with you. And then I go unto him, that sent me, ye shall seek me, and shall not find me, and where I am, uh, thither ye cannot come. Uh, then said the Jews among themselves, whither will he go, uh, that we shall not find him? Will he go unto the dispersed among the Gentiles, and teach the Gentiles? What manner of saying is this? That he said, Ye shall seek me, and shall not find me. And where I am, thither ye cannot come. In the last day, that great day of the feast, again, we're talking about the feast, folks. Did you catch that? Oh, my God. Another revelation. I get it. Amen. Hallelujah. I know, it's that preacher side. I tell you, that preacher spirit, man. Uh, all right. What manner of saying as this, that he said, ye shall seek him and ye shall not find him, and where I am, thither ye cannot come. In the last day, that great day of the feast, uh, Jesus stood and cried, saying, any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. Ah, uh, yeah. And uh, he that believeth on me, as the scripture hath said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. What? Really? Rivers of living water. And that's just great. That's awesome. But this spake he of the Spirit, which they that believeth on him should receive, for the Holy Ghost was not yet given, because that Jesus was not yet glorified. It's getting there. Hang on. There's more. Hang on. Others said, this is the Christ become, or let's see, but some said, shall Christ come out of Galilee? Hath not the scripture said that Christ cometh of the seed of David and out of the town of Bethlehem, where David was? 
So there was a division among the people because of him. They were split in their opinions. Hmm, kind of like how we are now. The Democrats and the Republicans. And no, I'm not going to get into a political debate here. I'm just saying, look at the similarities. The people were divided. Even back then, they were divided. They were in division. Is that not how we are now? And look at all the, 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 the different tribes back then. Look at all the different religions we got now. Is that not a revelation? This is what woke me up, folks. I'm telling you. I'm not speaking lies here. This is the truth. This is what I'm getting. Back then in all those tribes, they were all split with all their, all their different groups and religions and beliefs and all that, as we are now. It's amazing the similarities. Nothing's changed. It's like we're going backwards. You know, as I was advised by my advisor, we are going backwards in reverse. It's, re it's mind-boggling or mind-bottling, as I heard somewhere in Ricky Bobby or one of the movies or something like that. Oh, my God. It's hard not to get excited about this word. It's clear truth. So there you go. That's the preacher. Here we go. <laughs> yep. Oh my God, I got the giggles again. He he's poking me and he goes, Yeah, got it right, brother. I know. Thank God we have this word. Good grief. I'm not done yet, folks. Hold on to your booties. I got more where that's coming from. So, we're at 43. So there was a division among the people because of him. And some of them would have taken him, but no man laid hands on him. Uh, you don't want to do that, I'm telling you. Then came the officers to the chief priests and the Pharisees. And they said unto them, Why have ye not brought him? That's my soldier thing here. I don't know. The officers answered, Never a man spake like this man. Then answered them the Pharisees, Are ye also deceived? Fools. Have any of the rulers or of the Pharisees believed on him? Fools. I'm just making that up. Don't quote me. I'm just throwing that in there. I'm ad-libbing uh, but this people who knoweth not the law are cursed. That's in there. It's in 49. Nicodemus said unto them, Oh, we go, we go back to Nick. Here we go. Nicodemus saith unto them, He that come to Jesus by night being one of them, doth our law judge any man before it hear him and know that what he doeth? They answered and said unto him, As thou also of Galilee, search and look, for out of Galilee ariseth no prophet. And every man went into his own house. All right, that's going to conclude chapter 7, folks. We're going to jump into 8 tomorrow. This talks about Jesus forgives an adulteress. And it builds and builds, folks. Uh, that was some good stuff, folks. I'm feeding you the truth here as I uh, try not to knock over my, uh, my stand here. I'm giving you the truth. Uh, I speak the truth of God. Amen. Uh, now throw some antidotes in there. I just threw uh, that spiritual uh, that spiritual preacher side of me. I just get excited when I hear the word, and I'm glad that uh, I'm able to uh, preach the truth, give you the word. Uh, what do we got on tap? What's on the menu, Maestro? Well, I got a little bit more nuggets, and then I'm going to close out. Uh, Life Grace Ministries Minister Preacher with Crowley here. Feeding you the word of truth. 
Amen, amen, amen. I'm glad you guys could be with me. You know where we're at. Rabble TV, Ustream TV, Life Grace Ministry, 60 at gmail.com. It's the official. I know I'm not an announcer, but I know one on TV. Uh, yeah. So, uh, YouTube, uh, where are we at? Uh, Blog Talk Radio. I got a radio show, folks. How cool is that? Uh, it's a nightly, uh, daily, weekly live radio show. It's a little bit muddy, but it works because it's still getting the truth out there. It's still getting the word, the word out. I am witnessing to somebody. I am getting this message out to you guys. The broadcast is in progress at God's Radio. I know it's G-O-D-F-M playing all night, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, bringing you the word. Uh, lost in that spiritual realm. Amen. So I'm going to close out. Now this, I think I said before, I got to do this again. I was just reminded to tell the folks some good messages here. So these are coming out of, uh, where are we at? No, it's got uh, 2 Corinthians 4, 16 and 18 and number 6, 24, 26. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine on you. Amen. Be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. Uh, amen, amen, amen. May the Father bless you with a growing assurance of his great love for you. May his grace and mercy fill you with unending peace. May your heart grow ever more tender to the Spirit's leading. And may you rest in the truth that he works all things together. Because he does. Uh, for good. In seasons of adversity and in pain... May you be overwhelmed by his presence and protection. May the companions of health and wisdom be yours in abundance. All right, just getting the notes here. So, trusting God means looking beyond what we can see to what God sees. As we look down the street, God sees around the corner. Did you catch that, folks? I hope so. We do not lose heart, but through our outer man is the king, or though our outer man is the king, yet our inner man is being renewed day by day. For a momentary light affliction is producing for us an eternal weight of glory far beyond all comparison. While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are what, what, wait a minute, let's get a retract here. While we look not, there it is, not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. What? I'm missing something. I know, I'm going to go back over this because he keeps poking me in the shoulder about this. It says, while we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. Huh, are seen and not seen. I get it. For the things which are not seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. 2 Corinthians 4, 16 and 18. Good grief. Took that long just to say that little sentence. It's cool though. So, be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all comprehension, he will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Philipp, uh, Philippians 4, 6, and 7. Brothers and sisters, we're out of here. Uh, it's been real, and it's been fun, and it's been real fun. Because I love getting this word out. I got the zeal. I got the preacher spirit in me. And I'm giving you the word. I'm giving you the business. Because I'd rather be about my father's business. Anyway, amen. Good grief. Say that five times fast. I bet you choke on it. I don't know. Maybe you won't choke on it. But it's still fun to say fast. But uh, just don't say it too fast. Don't trip up. It's okay. I promise. God's got you. Amen. So... 
as I conclude tonight's broadcast, folks, ladies and gentlemen, friends and family, it's been fun talking to you. I am grateful that you're here. I'm grateful that you uh, tune in, hang out. It's only after 10. What else you got to do? What day is it? Tuesday? It is Tuesday. All day. I woke up this morning. It was Tuesday. Now I'm going to bed. It's going to be Tuesday. I know. I'm trying to be funny. God's got this thing going on so much. I got the zeal. I got the spirit. Amen. I get choked up on the word of God. Amen. So I'd like to uh, just uh, give a shout out to my bride. Uh, I'll talk to you in a minute here. We are going live, folks. Global, international, 24 countries right now as I just reached Greece. Amazing. I think that's like 26 countries now because I just got a Twitter earlier and an email from a pastor or a preacher in Greece. Blows my mind. Holy cow, really? That's cool. Uh, as you can tell, I get a little bit excited just a little bit, just a smidgen, because it is cool. This is this is amazing that uh, I've been able to reach uh, all of those souls, uh, amen, and feed them the Word of God, amen. That's what's in me all along, and that's what I'm trying to get out to you guys, because the Spirit was grieving. He is grieving, he said, and he wants me, I know, breathe in, breathe out, take a deep breath. Minister, you're going to be just fine. I know I am. Are you? All right. I got some uploading to do. I got some talking to do. I got some more coffee to make because I'm almost out of my mud. All right. So we'll be back tomorrow uh, with another exciting episode. The gift that keeps on giving. Uh, we're in... Where are we at? Good grief. We're in chapter 9. Or 8. 8 or 9. 8. There we go. I'm just kidding. All right, folks, get some coffee. Get some rest. Soak in the word. Go over your notes. I got more where that came from. Life Grace Ministries. Minister Preacher Rick Rowley here live out in the air. That's my radio voice, by the way. All right. Deep breath, excel. Excel, inhale, inhale. Breathe, breathe, breathe. I know I get so excited I can't hide it. And don't worry, I'm not going to break into another song and dance here. I just love getting this word out. Can you tell? Uh, yeah, there's a little bit of excitement there. Even though the spiritual attacks, it don't matter because I'm attacking back. I know, I'm a poet and I didn't know it. All right, we're out of here. You guys uh, have been fun. This has been cool. And uh, we know we're at where we're at. Good grief, we're going on two hours. Was that not a cool word tonight? Uh, it was for me anyway, and uh, everybody that's listening, I'm grateful, glad you guys could be with me. Cue the thunder. Where are we at? Minister, I don't hear it. What? What? Whoa, 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 here we go. Here we go. Cue the thunder, because we're out of here. You guys have been great, Life Grace Ministries, uh, off the air here. Uh, we're uploading, we're downloading, we're getting all this stuff out. You guys have been awesome. Shabbat Shalom, Saints. Yeshua and Yahweh. Muchas gracias to my amigos in Tejas, my amigas. You guys have been awesome. I'll talk to you later. Hold that thought because I got more coming for you. We're live, coming back. Uh, don't forget the sites, the profiles, Blog Talk Radio, Facebook, Twitter. All that jazz we got coming for you from God FM. I know, I know. Good grief. I'll see you later. God bless you.